Well, today I'm going to turn your understanding of nature on its head. Light is a wave, right? Well, sometimes. But sometimes it acts like a particle. Electrons are particles, right? Well, yes, but sometimes it acts like a wave. Electrons act like a wave. And so the, these discoveries of these, the so-called wave-particle duality is one of the triumphs of the, of the last century of physics and is one of the most fascinating things about our world. Let's start off with a demo. This is an example of a black body, so-called. It's not black. It has a white interior. But it serves as a good example of a black body for the following reason. Light that comes through this hole is uh, reflected around inside of the box and has a hard time getting back out before it's reflected several times. So effectively, even though the interior of the box is white, the image that you see through the hole is black. And that's an indication that the light, uh, that all of the light that comes through this hole is actually absorbed by the body itself. Black bodies are important because if once they've absorbed all the light and they don't reflect any, they actually then emit radiation according to the black body spectrum and according to their temperature, they have this bell-shaped black body spectrum that they emit out into space. This is at a low enough temperature that the black body spectrum is not visible but an incandescent bulb, for example, is at a high enough temperature that its black body spectrum is visible to the eye and actually involves some heat and infrared, uh, infrared light, as, it, as in heat, as well as ultraviolet light that, that will come from those sources. So this is a demonstration of the black body spectrum. Okay, so this black body, so-called, the light that goes through that hole in the box gets essentially absorbed, it bounces around a lot, but essentially is absorbed inside that box. And then the, the, the radiation that comes from the hole, called black body radiation, is characteristic of the temperature of the body. So these are black body radiation curves. Explaining these curves was one of the challenges of the early 1900s in physics. Classical physics just couldn't describe why you should get curves like this. And what is it? It says that the radiation intensity as a function of the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation reaches a peak and uh, falls off on either side of the peak. And the location of that peak depends on the temperature of the body. For this red curve, the temperature of the body is assumed to be 6,000 degrees Kelvin, which is the temperature of the surface of the sun. So this is the black body curve that corresponds to the uh, radiation emitted by the sun. And that's actually observed experimentally. You can see a uh, the spectrum of the sun, the radiation as a function of wavelength looks like this curve. Here's a black body curve for an object at 4,000 degrees Kelvin, which has a, a, a peak in its radiation intensity at a longer wavelength. So objects that are at room temperature, about 300 degrees Kelvin, they're gonna have black body curves that look like something like this, where the peak will be outside of the visible. So that was the example that we saw in with, with the box, which is at a roughly room temperature and a hole in the box. It looked black. We didn't see any radiation from it because the black body spectrum doesn't radiate in the visible range. An incandescent bulb, as was mentioned in the demo video, 
does, however, have a temperature that's in this range and, and emits some light in the visible range. Now, does a body have to be a perfect black body to emit radiation? And the, and the answer is no. All bodies continuously radiate electromagnetic waves into space, including your body. So your body is at uh, 98.6 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, whatever that works out to be in Kelvin. There's a black body spectrum that's emitted by your body. And in fact, you already know this because if you get in yourself into a an enclosed space, uh, you'll heat up that space by the radiation provided by your body, which is primarily in the infrared range. So your, your body's producing heat and that is your black body uh, radiation produced by your body. Uh, bodies that are perfect emitters and uh, well that absorb all radiation incident like the the hole in the in the box that I showed you will will closely replicate this black body spectrum our, our bodies are not not that way but but they'll they'll come close they'll approximately it's approximate uh, approximate this uh, black body curve um, in 1900 Max Planck pronounced Planck <laughs> calculated the shape of this curve using a model that represents a black body as a large number of atomic oscillators with energies restricted to discrete values. So he was just trying to understand this curve and he actually replicated the curve very well theoretically with this very odd assumption that the energies of these atomic oscillators inside of a, of a body, your body or the inside of that box, were restricted to discrete values. The word that we use now to describe the restriction to discrete values is called quantization. It means that something, the energy in this case, is restricted to discrete values. And what his assumption was is that those energies, so this is the energy of, of one of those little oscillators. Think of it as just a little mass on a spring, tiny little mass on a spring inside of a body. That the energy of that oscillator is an integer n times a constant that I wanna say a little bit more about, times the frequency of the light of the electromagnetic radiation. So this was a bold assumption, this quantization of energy. It turns out to have um, reshaped our whole understanding of our physical world and of physics. What's this constant? H is called Planck's constant. And its value is 6.63. Pretty easy numbers to remember. It starts with a 6, and there's another 6, and then there's a 3, which is half of 6. 6.63 times 10 to the minus, you got a 3 here, and you got another 3 up here. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And you say, well, why should the units be joule seconds? And my answer is energy is measured in joules, right? Frequency is measured in uh, cycles per second. And so if Planck's constant H is measured in joule seconds, the per seconds in the frequency will cancel the seconds in the Planck's constant and you get joules out for energy. So Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. I'd like to point out that this is a very, very small number. And the fact that this number is so small is the reason why most quantum mechanical phenomena, quantization and this sort of thing, are very, very far from our experience. Numbers that small are just out of the realm of our experience completely. And we'll give some examples about that. Oscillator frequency, et cetera. It was a bold assumption and it's revolutionized um, physics.